Hello everyone, no respawns, hope you're doing well. So, this video I've got something a bit interesting for you, uh, because people were asking me this and I thought it would potentially be either a cool idea or an absolutely catastrophic idea that's just really awkward and isn't very informative. However, we're here now, so let's give it a shot. So, as you can probably see, I am in the creation kit and I'm going to show you how it works, basically. The reason I thought this might be useful is because as someone who's only been using it for a couple of weeks myself, There'll be a lot of more immediate things that hopefully maybe I'll notice that maybe a more experienced new user might not remember to show you. Just a few best practices, things that confused me first, that kind of stuff. Now, firstly, I've already loaded everything up. The reason big is because it takes absolutely ages to load in. Um, like a good few minutes, but I'm going to tell you the pro show you the process. So um, also, as a side, I don't have a microphone stand, which means you might occasionally hear noises of me touching my desk. I put like t-shirts under things, that shouldn't be too bad, but um, you will however hear me um, have my Diet Coke now and then, so. Mm. It's actually not Diet Coke, it's Pepsi Max Cherry because I really like Pepsi Max Cherry. Right, on that note, uh, so firstly, when you would normally start in, this screen will be blank, this screen will have nothing there, and this will almost certainly come up with error messages. Ignore that, just go down there. That's where the error messages section <laughs> lives. Uh, the reason why is because I'm pretty sure everyone has error messages because it started getting them the second I loaded and I think it's like everything um, or it's like, I think it's more like warnings, sort of like example, like no shader property and things like that. So just, 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 just move that there. Uh, that'll be fine. Right, so when you load in first, everything will be blank. So you want to go to this folder here and it'll have all of your plugin and master files. Now, the master file is the one that you want. Again, this little cursor up here, come into the data. It's way more intimidating than it actually is. Put it this way, like me, I'm someone who's been video editing for over two years, and I use the Adobe Suites quite a lot. So if you can under understand the conventions of programs like that, you will figure this out really, really quickly. Um, Right, so when you first make a mod, you want to obviously edit the base, obviously you do want to um, edit the base master file, so you just want to basically click on this, and then set as active file, and then you save a copy, so then you just go to, oh, one second, fuck off, um, then you go to save, and it'll save a new version and give you the option, so don't worry, you won't over, you, you can't save over the master file. Um, and then when you go back in again, you just select your plugin, just your plugin, and set as active file. And then what it'll do is you see it's set them both as the right file. So no respawns at Sanctuary House. Okay. So then when you come in, it'll take a while for it to load up. Like mine took about just shy of two minutes to give you an idea. I have two monitors open, so I'm always on Twitter or on Reddit or on Facebook or wherever I am just screwing around. Don't panic. It looks like it's not working. It is. Um, I've got a reasonably alright computer, just for the record, so I've got um, an i7-6600K, uh, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA GTX 970. So it's kind of like your standard, pretty much your run-of-the-mill, mid-range Steam user PC, and yeah, it took about two minutes. Um, so you'll come in, and it'll be, select, it'll be set on interiors, and you'll come in. This will pop up, and it'll say cell view. Pretty self-explanatory. These are all the interiors of the game. There's the Commonwealth, that's Diamond City, Good Neighbour, Sanctuary Hills View, Hills World is the pre-war, so if you want to have a look around Sanctuary Hills pre-war, you can actually go. I didn't realise there's actually quite a lot of stuff there. Not like much, but you know, it goes up further than I was expecting. Um, and you want to select Commonwealth. I reselected it again because this will then reload them all again visually. As you can see, it's all, ah, you see it's no responding, don't worry about that, it's fine. That's how long it takes, it might take a little longer. And then you have all of them. It's, it's pretty nightmarish, actually, to scroll through. You can, like, do that sometimes and type it in. But the problem is, you see what it did, is it, it actually adjusted the world space. Um, so I just tend to scroll down. And then you select... If I go back to Commonwealth again, sorry. Oh, that's why I don't... You Sometimes I can type Sanctuary in, right? And it'll, it'll take me to the S range. But then sometimes it changes the world space because reasons. And it's really annoying. So what I generally do is just scroll down a bit. And just scroll down... You'll get it. These are basically like coordinates. So Sanctuary Healed EXT is the one I normally select. But if you did like two, it would just shunt you a bit more to the left. It's like quadrants, basically. So once you double click that, go in, double click it, and it will then load up again. It will take a while. 
and then you don't need this anymore. Move it down there. The reason why you, I would recommend moving it to the bottom is because as you move around, it'll flash up and tell you where you are, and it's just a bit distracting. So you'll kind of be over here somewhere, and you'll be looking down like that. Ooh, not that like that. About, about like that, yeah? About like that, um, over a building, and it potentially might look like that as well. I'll show you what that is in a second. Okay, so firstly, navigation. Very straightforward, potentially, but there are a few, like, navigational tricks, which I'm going to show you that make your life a little bit easier. So firstly, uh, to move around, I there might be a couple, of, by the record, there might actually be a couple of other buttons you can press to do the same thing. I do not know. These are the buttons I use. Okay? Just, just before someone goes, actually, you can do it like this. I'm like, cool, well, I do it like this, yeah, dickhead. Anyway... <laughs> So I click on, someone is slamming doors downstairs, noisy little shits. Anyway, so I click the middle mouse button and it allows me to move around like this, yeah? Voila, if I want to move in, I scroll in and then scroll out. Um, just for the record, I'll show you, but I've actually got my scroll and a lot of my movement speed lowered down, uh, but that'll explain that in a sec. And if you hold down shift and move the mouse, you move up and down. Now, as a quick side, you may notice that that was quite a steep angle right there. Now, this is one of my short navigational tricks. You will always n move around the item you're selecting. Right, so, if I scroll around that, move up and down. This is holding shift, by the way, as well. So I'm holding shift, can move up and down, but I can move left to right. Sorry about the jerkiness, but it is loading loads of stuff in, so it will do this, especially when you're going over a, a large area like this. As you can see, the reason why I suggest this is because you might occasionally do like that while you're inside a house, not realise, and then scroll around that. So if you ever want to fine-tune your scrolling, just always make sure you've got a nice small, ideally a t small item selected. So it just allows you to move around it a little bit easier. It's very good. Now also, whenever you're moving around and you don't know what you've selected, rather than rotate around like a crazy person, just press the D button. And this will deselect the item. Uh, it's really useful. You're, you'll find situations of what I mean, where you might accidentally select a cloud, which is what I used to do all the time, and not know what I was selecting, and I wasn't able to fine tune. So just deselect, and just occasionally you might find it where you can't select the items. It's really, really useful, especially when you're inside. Now, so there we go. So hold shift, mouse wheel in and out. Hold down the mouse wheel. You can also go up and down. So left, right, and up and down. Right, it's really super. Basically, it's it's kind of left, right, up and down as your screen is facing it. So if I were, like, facing directly down, it's... You get my point, yeah. Um, now, a couple of useful things. So later on, you will want probably to fine-tune your scrolling and your zooming and your movement generally. So in the top here, if you go File preferences and its movement and you can basically just change it. It's pretty standard sample. So movement speed, arrow speed, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, Scap to grid speed, which I will also show you in a sec, which is these two things here. And rotation speed, I've set it to one. You can invert it, you know, uh, it's, it's really, really straightforward. Fuck off. Thank you, not you. Hello, Codsworth, how are you? And that's basically it on the navigation. I'm gonna turn the weather on because looks better also when you turn the weather on at least with mine it's always a little low resolution don't worry about it if it were any higher resolution it would probably be a nightmare to actually move everything around but it's fine okay so we've, we've navigated we've deselected so let's go and sad meows shall we Ooh, here we go so again see i always I, I tend to always select that box or that bottle Ooh, good zoom in you'll you'll get you'll get better at the navigation I'm, 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 I'm slowly getting better at navigation as well. <laughs> Shelf I did recently, so let's have a, oopsie, crafty look-see in. Looking very nice, that's a nice shelf. I'm actually quite pleased with that shelf, because it has like a theme, and you know, it makes sense. Some of my other shelves, namely the one behind me, which I can't be asked to. That one needs some rejigging, because I think it's a bit of a messy shelf. But anywho, right, so I'm going to show you now how to manipulate items. Very simple. So rather than, let's assume we wanted a, say I wanted to use this box, right? Now if I put Control D, it usually flashes, probably did flash, you can select it and move it out. That's copy, right? But that'll copy it exactly from where it is. So for example, uh, as a great example of why that is useful, is say, um, I wanted to duplicate that shelf and put one directly below it, I would just duplicate it and then move that shelf around. 
Now, also, then the functions to do a lot of this stuff is similar to, say, using a Word document. So, Control X is cut. Control V is paste. You can also do Control C as well. But um, I think I read somewhere it's not as good, but I can't remember why it's not as good. And also, whenever you move something around, it moves where your cursor is. So, that's very useful for moving items around. Uh, some surfaces don't work like that. A couple of desks, for example, no matter what I do, I can never actually put the item directly on top of it via that. I don't know why. Um, this, by the way, this is the same as when you drag an item from. So, for example, if I wanted to do... Um, one second. And I'll junk. These are my codes, by the way. Uh, so, when you went alien toy, it drags it so it's actually on the surface. Right now, on that subject, because we've now got an alien toy, which is now our new little test dummy. Uh-huh. Is um, we're going to show you how to move it. So firstly, to rotate it, I'm holding the right mouse button, and I'm just spinning it around. La la la. Very very straightforward. If I just use the normal mouse, this is how it is on default, and just I can drag it around with the left mouse button, and that's pretty much on. So it's basically this is all on a horizontal plane. Now I wanted to move it up and down. I press wrong button E, and E allows me to move it up and down like that, and you can also do it on the horizontal plane as well but less flexible and you can still rotate as well but basically I use E mostly just to move things up or down that means that it, you will find yourself maybe getting a little bit annoyed so for example I wanted to put him actually maybe he's a bad example let's use someone else let's do a barter bubble head there we go because that's better because it's on flat on the surface so I can like move that around and just I mean I could just copy it Sa save whatever reason I didn't want to copy paste it for whatever reason I can just do that and then it's you know, on, and then you can just keep zooming in. In you go there, Davey. In you go. You see what I mean about setting, putting the setting. I mean, I might even turn my rotation down a little bit. And I can just move them down. Oh, you know what I mean. Okay, um, or I can just do this, because it's, like, much easier. <laughs> but there are, for example, putting posters on, you know, walls and stuff like that. You will have to find two of them, or just certain objects won't work very well. So I deselect the objects. Things like that. I'm actually, I'm not going to have that there because I've already got one somewhere. Now, say I want to... You come back because I need you, actually. Come here. Come here. So I want to rotate it a little bit. Press W. This will allow me to change the axis it's on. So, for example, if I wanted this leaning against stuff, a uh, prime example, that piece of jet up there is leaning, that kind of thing. Voila. Voila. Very, very straightforward. Now, um, this is the reason why I deleted him because I don't need him anymore. Oh, yeah, actually, no, we do one thing. If you want to resize him, you just press 2. Press 2, and you drag this open. And you can make him giant. And, by the way, all of this is uh, counts as in... It's not, None of this is external scripts or anything like that. So if you're playing on PS4, I have a PS4 uh, PC version, and want to play on PS4 with a giant bubble head over Sanctuary, you totally can. Right, now, a little bit of best practice. When you drag a item in for the first time... Oh, that is not how you spell poster, David. Um, when you drag an item in for the first time, its axes are in the perfect place for you to move it up and down. Actually, that's a much worse idea. Let's show it because it's useful with the plyboard. Plywood? There it is, plywood. Uh, so the reason why I show you this is, say if I would have just grabbed this like that. I'm just going to borrow you. Can I borrow you because I can make... Oh, wait, wrong button. Don't forget to unselect things. Oh, by the way, Control Z is undo. So if you make a mistake, you can literally edit. You can just go back to like right from the start. So, uh, so say if I want to move this around, you may notice it's on a weird axis. The reason being is because I rotated it first, right? So once I've rotated it, it's immediately on the wrong axis. Boop, 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 boop. See, undo. Uh, now, if I go, the reason why this is useful, put that ply board there. You see, it's on the correct, it's kind of, it, it at its default axis. So as long as I don't rotate any of this, like say if I wanted to do this, so its axes are all messed up. This is really useful for the ply board, especially because I was boarding up the windows and they start vertical, um, horizontal rather than vertical. It meant that if I wanted them completely flat against the window, I wanted them in this default position first and then I move them back up. You'll... You'll get it. It's the same with posters as well. If you want them uh, at a different angle for whatever reason, you'll understand. 
Um, and then also a really useful thing at the top here, you've got this one. Um, which annoyingly, um, I don't have those little pop-ups that tell you what it is. So I don't know what this is called. I think it's whatever. What this does is it moves it. You just drag the mouse a little bit. It's a bit aggressive. But it snaps it at an angle. Like that. And that's really useful if you want it perfectly horizontal. I believe that's called um, snap to angle. And you see it's 45 degrees. So it's pretty straightforward. Bugger off you. Okay. That is literally it for navigation. Very, very straightforward. This is 50 minutes already. So this is a long video, but I don't mind. It's fine. This is more of a general introduction. You know, I, I might do more niche things later on. Or we'll just build stuff and then I'll go through. Because um, I'm thinking I might actually do just Creation Club build videos as well. Because some people have requested it and it could potentially be quite fun. Okay. So next, I want to show you very briefly. Because I want this video. It might be a long video, by the way. Is I want uh, this video to be something that you could ostensibly use yourself right now and go make something like this so right now firstly these are all static items right uh so these are items of the game oh a bit of siren i don't know if you to hear that one you might anyway sirens noisier sirens aside um obviously i had to make this static there isn't actually by default a static version of this coca-cola bottle that actually might be of the coca-cola bottle because i think there's one at the start of the game but say the shalt shaker <laughs> Or maybe this soup, there definitely isn't one of them. Right, now, how I made this static was that... God, those sirens. Oh, yeah, it is, like, Friday night, to be fair. And I'm inside. Uh, these... So, basically, I need to find a static item and then change its model and rename it. Okay? It's very, very straightforward. So, firstly, you may notice when I'm looking for items, this is really self-explanatory. You just search for what you know. If you've been building for a long time, you will know what to look for. Um, I want a basket and you'll get the symbol as well. So if I just drag this out for a sec, it says static. So static, um, that's an actual, um, I think that's actually, that's like one that actually is, uh, it'll move around basically. And then like, that's, I think a script and that's, um, basketball. So that's actually an item you can pick up. You, you'll kind of get it. Um, misc, yeah, all that jazz. So what I need to do, let's, let's, let's make a static item now. Um, so what have I not? I've made a static item of nearly everything. But let's do, let's do a skull. Let's make a static item of a skull. So, okay. So there we go. Um, let's do bones skull. And, right, so when you click on an item first, you click it. And this is actually, so this will be the one you can pick up. And you've got this here like this. All very confusing. What the hell is going on? So I select edit. That will be the skull. It always looks like that. I don't know why. And that is the skull model file name. You can also change the material, but I can't be asked to show you that now. So I just... What I want to do is copy this. Get rid of that. Um, I actually normally have like a text file open. And I do a mass copy of models. And then I just do all of them when we go. I'm just going to do this one at a time. And I find a static item. So I'm just going to do NI junk because I've already made loads of them. Um, and also because that way I can redo the code. So I've got my dumbbell here. And I go to model. Edit. Copy paste this in. And I've got NR junk. So skull. Skull. Now when I hit OK, I used to make duplicates of them. So you can right click and make duplicate. You don't need to do that. It'll give the option to do that. So then I hit OK. And okay, um, you have changed the form's editor ID, which is this part here. Create new form. Now, if I wanted to update, so if I wanted to change the dumbbells display name, or, you know, because I always like to give them display names if we scrap them, or I just don't like my IDs misspelt. Um, if I didn't want to do that, I would hit no, and it would just update the dumbbell one. However, I want to create a new form, and that's literally it. So now we have my skull. Bum, 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 bum. Bump. Voila! And see this, this, um, you probably placed a skull before in the game. Oh, yeah, I've still got freaking this open. But basically, some items will auto sync like that because that's just where their default point is. So then you have to move around like that. Now, when I've got the arrow keys, I can actually. Once, once something's yellow, I can use the arrow keys to move it around, which is really good. I've got this turned to zero because this is, this is as 
minor as I can. I think I might want to get minor actually if I put point something, but I'm not too sure. So this is as low as it can go. And the W, and again, see, because I've already, I might have already rotated that, I could have this just like, there we go. And then select the one who's just, let's be a little further down. Boop, boop. And you could still drag, there we go. I mean, it's floating a little bit, but you get my point. And if I wanted them to have like some little pygmy skull, or it's just some giant dude's hell skull, and it's metal as fuck, you get my point. Oh, that would actually look really cool. I should do that. And that's basically how you make a static item. Now, as you can probably see, that's all the junk items I've done, but I've also coded it. So I give them familiar names. So, uh, you know, no respawns, junk, skull. No respawns, well, uh, food. So my food takes ages. Individual doesn't take very long, but it takes a long time. Tool, you get my point, right? So I've done it so that way I can theme certain areas. It takes ages. This is what most of my time is doing. A lot of your difficulty will be just remembering what things you want, right? When you've got, you know, OC decorator, the items are there. So you can go, oh, well, I'll use that. Oh, I'll use that. But in the case of this, I've had to, um, you know, think. It took a while. I had the wiki open in my secret monitor. So I go, yeah, I want that. I want that. I want that. Right, now, so that's all the junk. I'm going to now show you how to make safe containers and place light sources. And then I also want to connect stuff to the workshop. Sorry if this take too long, but you know what? It will be a cool, long, interesting video, hopefully. So firstly, a container. Now, pretty much every container is, unselect that, actually, you know what, I'll just take that a second so I can move around. Um, every container is respawns, so it's not safe. So if you put an item in a normal container, so, so I go to locker, uh, so there we go. Ooh, come back here. So I do this lock here. Foot locker that will, uh, if I click on it, it will go props, foot locker, and it respawns. See, now if I untick this and say, Oh, I don't want that foot locker to respawn, it will then make every single foot locker with when you have this file plugin installed, every foot locker of the game that uses that one will then not respawn. So if you're playing a survival playthrough, yeah. It won't work, right? So, and especially if you happen to, like, say, pick um, what's repair locker, say, for example. Oh, no, let's find one with, like, uh, specific stuff in it. Some of them have specific items. There we go, Night Lucia. Foot locker. There we go. So, for example, this is Night Lucia's F um, foot, foot locker. I could delete all that, and then she would never have, or he, I think it's a she um, would then never have those items in there, right? So you obviously don't want to do that. You want your own, but if you don't want a static version that you can't use, that's just a lid, but you could ostensibly make a static version using the same method. Right, so that means you need to make a copy. Now I've already got one of those. So let's do, um, oh, let's do what I have. Um, these are all my lockers, they're safe. Oh, so many, god damn. Oh, I know what I don't have. I don't have a med kit on the floor, so med kit. Okay, um, while that's doing that, so you may notice it's frozen a second. You will find, because you notice it kind of like auto-populates, dependent on what you're typing in. Occasionally, it'll just, like, you'll type N, and then it'll go, right, I'm going to bring you everything that has N in it. And So, yeah, just sorry about that. It'll happen. Right, so I want, so I've got player med kit rule, as you can see. I want to check which one this is. So that's... That's a nice med kit, but I don't have one of those. So what I need to do is it's so simple. Now, firstly, container loot med kit. So this is a script that means that this will contain random med kit loot, right? But obviously, I want this to be my med kit. Well, steps if you could have them, still have this if you want. But I don't. I want them to be empty. So what I'll do is delete that, click that, and our player thing occasionally there is do i do that one as well no no it's just those ones just those ones yeah um nr player do i use that one li player med kit well there we go nr player pre-war wood kit and it's literally the same thing create any form i used to make again things and now voila you now have safe things i think that's all i do let me just double check oh, no, no, no. oh yeah i also often get rid of the scripts as well actually let me do that quickly i can show you so we'll just give it that. Actually, no, I don't leave those there. I don't want to play around with that. 
I might someone let me know in the comments, but I believe you, unless it has a particularly unique script, as long as you use the the like the standard ones like pre-war med kit or raider med kit, you're fine to go. So you can see, so that is now safe, which means it won't respawn. So the reason why you don't want to respawn is you don't want to put your items in there and then have it like respawn over them and delete them. Basically, you can also change the model if you like. Um, like ostensibly, I could I could change it. No, I'm not gonna do custom containers yet because I haven't officially done one yet. I do want to do. Eventually, I want to turn this into a custom food container, but I'm not gonna do that yet. So right, that is safe containers. Next, right. So now I'm gonna show you how to connect stuff to the workshop. Now I actually, I'm not gonna lie, I did actually have to pause to remember how to do this because I hadn't done this in a while. The good thing is I haven't actually connected my food. So I've done the workbenches here. I've done these, mainly because I actually wanted to use this in a save, but I didn't really give a shit about the food at the time. So you can see those lines, that means they're actually connected to this workbench here. Now, there are, you have to use a ref location reference. Now there are references for everything, but I don't know them all yet. But you can pretty much, I find the easiest way to do all this is to use kind of common sense best practice. And what I mean by that is, wait for the thing to load up quickly because it just went to a new location. But also, any pre-existing workbench or food, I can just open it up and I get linked ref. Um, a second ago, just record, I couldn't find where the link ref were because I was all the, way in, all the way over here. I was like, where is it? It's this way. Link to ref and workshop keyword, workshop item keyword, sanctuary workshop ref. So you need to double click on this and you see this is what you need. So it has this location, reference, workshop item keyword. So reference are the important, but you do obviously want the cell as well. Now I got really confused earlier because I hadn't done this in ages and I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? <laughs> I didn't understand, did I? But it's fine. Right, so we're going to go and do these mute fruits. So, firstly, this is reference-wise. So let's just do link to ref, double click. So sell, this is a sanctuary. This is actually... Um, I just choose that one because it's the closest one. I, it, I, to be honest, I've had no... It's the area you zoomed into, right? So anyway, now, work... What was it? Workshop. Uh, bum, bum, bum. I'm going a bit cross-eyed. I've, I've forgotten it already, haven't I? I've blanked. Yes, I have, but it's cool because I can just go cancel, cancel. You'll be doing this a lot, especially if you like me when you haven't done it in ages. Workshop item keyword, that's it, and it's sanctuary workshop ref. C, 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 but it's all right because this stops us from, uh, you know, getting cocky like we just did. Workshop item keyword, where are you, you git? It's always in a weird place. Um, I've got my glasses on as well. Workshop, workshop. Is it there? Or is it? Got to give it a second. Workshop. I think it might be. Oh, right, it's in the other thing. Because of course it did. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it had a... It's the other way around. <laughs> um, section. So basically, that's why I was getting confused, right? It's not in the order. So you need the keyword. Uh, I always doing it left to right, so top to bottom. So workshop item keyword and then sanctuary workshop ref. Okay, there we go. What the fuck is why was it the other way around? Anyway, and there we go. That food is now connected. So when that means when I actually assign someone to work that, they will actually work that which is pretty cool i don't actually know how to do power but i'm gonna quickly just attempt to figure it out oh easy there treacle see what i mean about typing in um generator i think i just did a static generator last time uh where is it bump oh, i was fine just sorting the item i always forget what things ah there we go looks like mm. Right, so that's not connected. Let's figure it out. So we just need to link it, really. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do that because I could link it, but I bet you wouldn't generate power. I will do a video on power 
another time because I don't get it. Because I had a windmill here that worked but didn't generate power and I think it needs um, a separate thing to set up the power. But right, yes, so other than my little aborted attempt at trying to figure out power, that is how you connect stuff to the workbench. That is how you navigate. Oh yeah, and one more thing actually, because I don't recall, I was going to show this then forgot, is you can change the weather around a little bit. So firstly, if I press A, it turns on the bright light. Um, it makes it a little bit less jerky, you may notice, uh, which is good, because obviously like this, it has to render in all the shadows. Whereas you can just do this if you just want to kind of, you know, work a little no-nonsense. But obviously it does look a little bit barren. Just as a side, you will probably load in like this. Um, I did put some press. So you press A. A, 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 A. Or you can click, as you probably guessed already, this. At the top. Now if you press S. No, it's not S. Is it? Yes, it is S. It just takes a second. No, it isn't S. All right, fair enough. Click that. And it gets rid of the sky. I always thought it was S. Hmm. Sky back on. Click that, you can toggle the grass. It was six. It's six for Sky. What did S do then? Also, now these little pop up buttons are working. Or maybe it's because I hadn't clicked them. Mm. You can toggle the grass. This is toggle through, through the various visual elements of the grass. There is a way to get rid of grass as well, but I can't be bothered to show you that right now. And you can also change the time of day too. So, so for example, if I wanted to see how my lighting works, I could totally do that. And see, ooh. Now, one thing, but I won't do a proper video of this. Um, yeah, actually, one more thing. I was saying I was finished. I'm not finished yet at all. Let me just hit M for a second. So hit M. It will take a second. But these are all of the scripts. So you can see this is Dog Meets one. Don't. Careful where you delete these, okay? I've deleted a couple, but not many. The only ones I've deleted is I've deleted the one that makes the blood stain appear at the end of the bridge. So you may, you may notice... Uh, the couple of you who tried the, my mod out when I made it like temporarily available um, will know that I know Bloodstain. But also, I deleted his crypt. His crypt? Um, his uh, crib. Crypt? He doesn't sleep in a crypt, David. His crib. And so there was a script there, which I might actually bring back, but I'm not sure. So this is useful because this is how you move light around. So let me just quickly show you how light sources work. The reason being is you might do this, right? go I'm gonna put some light in and be like oh let's do light warm because warm lights are the best lights yeah um, that's a fact by the way the warm lights are the nicest looking ones um, so one second let's go in here for a second so pretend pretend you haven't put any lights in yet right get rid of that one and that one and that one Oh, yeah, this is where, by the way, you're going to really struggle um, selecting certain things. Because <laughs> you've got so much stuff all around it. There we go. And there's another one. There's loads of lights in here, isn't there? Right, okay. So now it looks like this. Oh, it's so dark. So say it's like this, right? And you've only just got at night time. You've been like this. And you're like, oh, why is it so dark? So let's do... Um, you can be really imaginative and do... Default warm light or something. Default light warm. But you don't know how to select it because what do you do, right? So then you hit M. Give it a second and then it'll be the floor. And then it literally maneuvers in the same way. But oopsie, don't hit him again, David. Don't get him again. You were going to hit E. Hit E and you can move them around. So this is how you move the light sources. That's literally it. Um, I remember when I first put a light source down, I was legitimately absolutely confused. The reason being is I put it here. Like it was inside that red thing there, right? So I didn't know it was there, and I got really confused. So if you happen to just... Because I put it in the kitchen, right? And it was... Just... Anyway, yeah. So basically, just be a little careful with the lights here. But they are fun. There was a little bit of a weird bug, um, which I found when I put... When I was building things and using artificial, like, mod-made lights. Sometimes they don't light up. It's really weird. It's like a bug in the game. I don't know why that happens. Uh, they just they just turn off randomly. Uh, but anyway, just to create um, and that's how you move the lights. As a side, lights create a lot of lag if you have too many of them. When I first did this and ported it to PS4 to test, I actually had each one of these giving off a light source. Each one of my uh, little Christmas lights giving off a light source, which meant that. It was like a complete lag fest because I had an orange, a white light, a red light, a blue light. Yeah, yeah, so don't do that. Be careful with your light sources. But right, that is actually everything now. That was all I wanted to show you. I'm sorry if that's a bit of a messy, but quite something to put. I wanted to just do kind of like a 
a crash course in how this thing works. Uh, when you adjust time of day, by the way, it just cycles through full day, so you'll get different weather if you go. I'm pretty sure you can press this button up here and play with weather, but I'm not going to do that because I don't know what the button does. So yes, I will have, hopefully, should have the mod finished by this weekend. It should be at the very latest, possibly Monday, okay? Uh, the only reason is, and this is a very, very valid excuse, I bought Kingdom Come Deliverance and haven't stopped playing. So that's why it's a bit... I'm a little bit behind. I have to do work, yeah? Stupid power isn't even working yet. Crying out loud. I haven't finished Sean's room. Anyway, if it's not done by the weekend. It will be done on Monday evening. Okay? God. <laughs> I'll also have a build video. I'm going to squeeze one of those in. Um, but until that point, you guys have a lovely... Let's be honest, it's going to be Saturday by the time this goes up. Saturday morning for you guys. GMT or around in Europe. For you Americans, it will obviously be an afternoon. So happy afternoon. Um, yes, I will have a potentially build video on the weekend. Maybe I'll do a mod video of this being launched. And that kind of stuff. If you actually liked me doing this, let me know. I know it was a very long video. It's going to be about nearly 40 minutes long. Uh, I haven't done one that long in a very long time. If you want me to do more, where maybe I do builds and stuff, let me know. Maybe I could do like um, a build series where I make mods and then eventually publish them. You can see me doing half of them. But we'll see. Anyway, you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.